Three simple ways to hold your own grounded energy. As empathic, sensitive beings, we are often very sensitive to the energy around us, whether it be family, coworkers, friends. And when we're affected, we don't stay centered. This often leads us into overgiving, people pleasing, poor boundaries. So I'm gonna share with you three simple ways on how to hold and center your own energy so you're not thrown off course. Holding your grounded energetic center as an intuitive and empathic person is key as a way to not get drained as we walk through life because as vibrational beings, the energy that surround us affects us. You can maybe recall hanging out with a friend who's having a hard time and then all of a sudden you're feeling ungrounded, you're feeling uncentered, maybe you're talking to a family member who just had a fight with somebody else and all of a sudden you recognize that pull, that place of just getting caught into the undertow of somebody else's vibration. And if we don't stay grounded and know how to hold our own energetic center, this leads to poor boundaries, people pleasing, overgiving, overthinking, and disconnects us from the present moment, from our intuition, and from ourselves. So before I go any further, let me introduce myself. Hi, I'm Sonia. I'm a fourth generation intuitive, and I teach you how to plug back into your innate divine self your intuition. And if you're new here, welcome. I love new people. I'm so glad that you found me, yay. And if you're returning, welcome back. Now, before we dive into the video with these three simple tools that I use all the time to hold my grounded energetic center, I first am gonna have some housekeeping. So I am so excited. Next week, I am launching my Psychic University group course. It is four live-led group class classes, which is so wonderful because we get to like interact and ask questions. We get to build a spiritual community and we'll be learning all about how to develop a relationship with our intuition and our spirit, staying grounded in our bodies, using our intuition to purposely create and so much more. The classes will be held from 7 to 8.30 each Wednesday night, Central Standard Time. They'll be recorded, you'll have homework. It'll be so much fun. So if this is something that's interesting to you, definitely check out the description box below. I cannot wait to see you there. So let's get into it. Holding your own grounded energy. This is often a plague for us intuitive sensitive people. I know all the time that I get affected by the energy of the people around us. How do we hold on to our energetic center? And it might be even so simple as now you're on your intuitive journey and you're making new decisions and you have to talk about it with your friends or co, not necessarily coworkers, your friends or your family. And you're like, how do I stay in myself? Because like they don't get it. Wow. The first thing when we talk about staying grounded in our own energy, that's so important is first we have to remember that our body is home number one. When we get affected by other people's energy, because like literally we are vibrational beings, emotions and energy is infectious. You can feel it. It's true. It's called emotional contagion. It's literally like a virus. So when we first are recognizing that we're affected, first thing that we have to do is first like root into our physical bodies. Home number one. A simple tool that I always like to use is what am I looking at? Anchor yourself into the present moment and look at what something is in the room and then take a breath. Now look at something else. I am looking at my, out my window. Take a breath. I am looking at my blue couch. Take a breath. I am feeling the weight of my body in my chair. Take a breath. When we can start to root back into the present moment, that helps us to root back into our own felt experience and kind of give us a bit of an energetic shield. 
when we are confronted with other people's energy, whether it's dissatisfaction, whether it's something more spicy, you know, the first thing that will happen is that our ego intellect will go into overdrive. This will have us get into overthinking. Is it me? There's something that I've done. What can I do? How can I fix this? And that little rotisserie chicken on a spit that gets afraid, that gets into fight, flight, freeze, figure it out, disconnects us. So the moment that we take a breath and look at something in our surroundings, it helps to bring us back. Now, the second thing that is my other favorite tool that I've learned from my mom, Sonia Shokat. And this tool is called Observe, Don't Absorb. When we recognize energy, however it may be, it might even be our own feeling of growth, of making a new decision, of doing something that's uncomfortable. Or for example, I had a client just the other day She's new on her spiritual journey and she has a partner who is very left brain, does not get it, not interested, not his thing. That's okay. But she wanted to go to a full moon ritual. Actually, she went to a full moon ritual, came back, was so excited about all these different things, her on her brand new spiritual journey, and just started sharing her experiences with him and just felt that he wasn't that interested. And there was a part of her that got into overdrive. She was like, I'm feeling all sorts of different things. And she's overly explaining herself and really just noticing and feeling his own kind of more, I don't wanna say withholding, but not that enthusiastic energy. So this is a simple tool where we observe. First, I observe my own energy. How am I feeling? Am I in that little rotisserie chicken in the spit? Just like I said, bring us back to the present moment. And then observe whoever else's energy you're interacting with. I just notice that for her, like I noticed that my boyfriend isn't that available. That's also okay. So I am just gonna observe his energy. I'm not gonna absorb his energy. I'm not going to take on whatever his experiences, narrative, understanding is. I'm just gonna look and see it for what it is. When we can practice observe, don't absorb, it helps to not only buffer our own energetic shields, but it also gives the people in our lives the grace to have their own experience. It's not ours to fix, figure out, explain. I can just notice. And when we notice, like she just noticed, like my boyfriend's not that into it, I can observe his energy. So actually I can share bits of my full moon ritual with him, but I don't have to divulge every little detail. I can observe that for me, this energy doesn't feel good when I'm sharing something in this space that I'm excited about that he's not that interested in. So I can observe that energy. I'm not absorbing it. I'm not taking it on. So. Tool two, observe, don't absorb. Now, this brings us to tool number three. Respond, don't react. Now this can be a little bit more challenging. When we are holding our own energy, staying centered in ourselves, it's hard because we can, our little ego intellect, like for example, with my client, her feelings may have been hurt or and her feelings were a bit hurt that he wasn't that interested. So her first emotional response may have been, well, you're never interested in the things that I care about or whatever, engaging in some sort of emotional kerfuffle. So instead, when she can observe the energy, not absorb it, not take it on, she can take that minute and that pause and respond instead of react. And the way that we respond instead of react is coming back to that very first simple tool that I gave you of taking a breath, anchoring into the present moment, noticing how our, what our own feeling bodies are feeling, taking that same breath, exhaling, grounding out, and then responding. 
you know. For her, it was even as simple as this might not be for you, but it, would you be interested to hear a bit about this? Because this was exciting for me. And actually, for him, he was able to hear some of it and be supportive in the way that he was available. But instead of having to react to whatever that his own experience was, it gave her a place to choose. Now, respond and don't react is really big when we are faced with people who are in a lot of emotional turmoil or drama. We can observe their energy, observe that they're having an experience, not absorb it. Second of all, take a breath. And that's where we can start to turn the trust over to their higher self, to their spirit, that this is not mine to fix, figure out, or manage. And when I can respond from a place of in my own heart space, and even just of saying like, it sounds like you're having a hard time, that must be challenging for you, I understand, then we can actually respond with more grace and react. And what actually happens is that oftentimes in their own energetic turmoil, they'll start to settle down. Because a lot often, what I know to be true is that when people are in upset, the big thing that they want more than anything isn't necessarily a solution, isn't for you to take it off their plate, but emotional witnessing. They wanna feel understood of how they're feeling. And so when we can observe, not absorb, take a moment, respond to what's underneath being said, how are they feeling? Maybe they're disappointed, maybe they're overwhelmed, blah, blah, blah. Instead of reacting, feeding the fire of, of drama, it will help to create an energetic shift. And in that is a way that we can hold our own grounded energy. Now, that very simple tool might be, yo, I, if I check in with my own energy field, I don't have that availability right now. I just had my neighbor come into town and we were chit chatting and she was sharing with me that she has a new friend and they were at dinner and her new friend said, hey, I was just talking to our other mutual friend. She unloaded and shared all this really heavy stuff with me. Do, and I actually need to share it. Do you have availability to hear it? And what I loved that she said, she said, I took a breath and I said, actually, I don't. And so with that was a energetic boundary. So instead of reacting to her friend's upset, her friend's distress, she responded from a grounded centered place of self instead of over giving. Now, I know I said three, but this is what I often do. Let's go to four. So if you are all of a sudden caught into that undertow, all of those different tools didn't work out, you find yourself triggered and hairpin feeling that same swirl and you're like, dang, or maybe you just got downloaded on. There are so many different things and you can feel it in your body. You can feel how it has centered you. The biggest thing that I always say is move your energy. Go for a walk, go put on some music, put on a song, dance, shake it off. And when we shake it off, when we literally, it helps to cut energetic cords and returns us back to center. And for the more that we move, the more that we move our bodies, the more that we spend time moving physically, yoga, dance, anything, five minutes, it brings us back to our own center, back to our own vibration, where we can really not only hold ourselves, but those walls. So these are just a few simple tools for you on how to hold your energetic ground. If you like this video, leave me a comment. I would love to hear from you. Do you have a favorite tool that you use to stay grounded in your own energy? And more importantly, if you really want to develop your intuition, your relationship with your spirit, and really even build a spiritual community, join my Psychic University class. We would love to have you there. Check out the description box below. <laughs> Please, I cannot wait. It will be so much fun. So I am sending you all my love. And also don't forget, we have my family podcast. It's all related out usually every Monday. So if you wanna know a little bit more where I come from and just have a conversation of what it really means to be in like a spirit centered world, check it out. And also check out a spirit type quiz down below, tons of free resources. So please stay in touch. I'm sending you all my love and I will see you next week.
Bye.